we present a new play by David Calcutt, based on stories in the Mabinogion, Kingdom of Crows and Carrion. Princes by the roadsides, bloated corpses. Terror and confusion in the eyes of the people. Everywhere, that same feeling of uh, things coming to an end. As if the earth is giving us. Oh, perhaps I have been too long in the world. We're tired of each other. But I can't let it rest, not yet. Not until I have found him the last thing I have to do in this life. Find him. Return him to his kingdom. Why is it taking so long? Why do you hear me? Where are you, hidden? Am I not meant to find you? Is it too late? <coughs> Have you seen that? Perhaps I should give up. 
makes things. There's an eagle in that tree. Mm, what? An eagle. Where? Uh, up there. See it? In the top branches. Yeah. It's strange, isn't it? Never seen an eagle round here before. It's him. Are you sure? Yes. How do you know? I know. He heard me, or someone did. The <laughs> searching's over. Cool him down, then. In a moment. I just need to uh, prepare myself. You could. Leave him there, of course. Leave him? He seems happy enough. Leave him? Uh, I could. <sighs> he won't stay there long. In a few minutes, he'll take flight. Be gone forever. If I were to remain silent... No, no, it must be done. I have to call him. Why? It's my destiny! And here. Oak that grows between two lakes, dark by sky and hill. Man in a bird's body. I think this is life. Down he comes. is in him. We must reawaken him. Oh, look at him. Wounded, starving, nothing but rags of skin and bone. He's a king. His crown and his kingdom wait for him. <laughs> the wind in my feathers, the sun in my eyes. What's that you say? Take flight and spread my wings. Soar into the sky. He's and remembering. Flies dead. The spear killed him. No, you are not dead. You live. I'm a bird. An eagle. I am the king of the birds. You are a man. Lie. 
the king of men. Fly is dead. Let me fly. Wait. Me. Open your eyes. Yeah. Look at Let me. me. Wait. Wait. No. You must. No. Stop it. He has got to wait. That's not the way. You shake what little laughter is right out of him. He needs to build his strength up. What he wants is some of Manny's milk. What? No, 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 no. Leave it to me. Now, you drink your fill. You've got to be a child again before you can become a man. Good boy. We'll soon have you well again. It's getting worse. There's no going out today. I'm just scratching around in here for a few scraps. Oh. What about you, Gwidjo? What are you going to eat? I'll give you some milk. I'm going to eat steak and eat all. Suck me dry. Hey, Gwidjon! You listening to me? Shh, 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 shh. He is awake. He has come back to us. spirit. Oh, at last. You got me to thank for it. Don't forget. <laughs> Boy. Do you know me? You? Do you know who I am? No. What's that? It's all right. It's just my pig. Just his pig. That's all the thanks I get. Be quiet. Do you know who you are? Who? No. I... I dreamed I was a bird. You have no memory of anything. No. Ah. Listen to me, then. I'll tell you the story of who you are and where you came from. It will take a long time as a, to tell, but we have all winter. Besides, you need to regain your strength. When spring comes, you will be strong again, and you'll know who you are, and you will leave here to meet your destiny. My destiny? Mm. What is it? Be patient. Hmm? You'll come to know it. Tell me first. Do I have a name? Yeah. Your name is Fly. <gasps> Your father was a king. His name was Ma. And, and my mother? What was my mother's <laughs> name? Your mother. Yeah. Go on. Tell him who his mother I is. I will come to that in my own time. Well, you told him who his father was. Let me deal with this. Who are you talking to? My pig, Keridwen. She speaks to you. Oh, yeah. Well, you must be a magician. Oh, he is. Magician, poet, storyteller. What's story she say? Writer. You wouldn't think it to look at him, would you? Oh, it's nothing important. I wish I could understand. Ah, that. as your knowledge deepens, perhaps you will. Uh, <laughs> he might not like what I've got to say. Will you tell me about my mother and father? Yes. At the right time. All you need to know for now is that your father was a king. And your mother cursed you at your birth. I swear this destiny on him. He shall never have a wife from among the people of this earth. That wind blew the fire out. You better make it up again. Uh, all right. My mother cursed me. Yes. Why? Well, that's what your story is all about. That's what your destiny is. To fulfill yeah, the events brought about by that curse. But the reason for the curse goes back to things that happened before you were born. It's like a web or a net. It was woven long ago, in which you are caught. By learning how the web was made, perhaps you can break it and free yourself. Ah, there now, that'll burn again. Are you ready to listen? Yes. Where does my story begin? It begins with a king. 
Not your father, another king. His name was Pull. And one day he was hunting alone in the forest. Suddenly, a wild boar stepped out from the undergrowth into the path in front of him. It was the biggest creature he had ever seen. Eyes red as blood, a hot breath blowing from its nostrils, tusks curved and sharp as two new moons. At any moment, Will expected the monster to attack him. But it didn't. It just stood there, looking at him. So, Will fitted an arrow to his bow, drew back the string, and loosed the arrow. It pierced the boar's neck, and the creature fell dead. But when Will went to examine the animal, he found The second had pierced the boar's neck on the other side. Leave that. Why? It's mine. Don't lay a finger on it. I killed it. The boar belongs to me. This is my arrow. And this is mine. The one that killed it. <laughs> How can you be sure? How can you? Whichever of us killed it, I came here first, so I claim the animal. Thief! Do you know who you're speaking to? I am Prill, King of David. Draw your sword! And I am Arau, King of Anun, Lord of the Dead. <laughs> you hear my hounds? The hounds of Anun. They come to take your soul away. No, Lord Arau. I beg you. You must come with me. Please, spare me. I, I, I didn't know who you were. I wouldn't have drawn my sword if I'd known. They come nearer. They have your scent. I, I was wrong. Take the boar. It's yours. It isn't the boar I want. I, I have a young wife at home. We're only just married. She'd be heartbroken. I beg you, spare me this time. And if I spare you, what will my payment be? Anything. Anything you ask. Listen then, I wish to live for a time in the world of men. For a whole year, I will stay here and rule your kingdom in your place. I'll take your shape. No one will know I am not you. A year? What will happen to me during that time? You will go with my hounds to my kingdom and rule there in my place. You will take my shape. And no one will know that you are not me. I must live for a year in Anun. A year is better than eternity. And for the same year, you will live and rule in my kingdom. Do you agree? Well, I have no choice. Good. But there's one thing you must promise me. You must. <laughs> I ask you to promise me. My wife. I know you will share my bed with her. As a matter of honor, my honor. You would deny me that pleasure? I would rather go with you now, forever, than have her touched by anyone but me. Very well. I respect your wish. I promise you that when you return, your wife will be as you left her. Take my hands. Repeat these words. My flesh. My flesh, your flesh. My blood, your blood. My blood, your blood. My bone, your bone. My bone, your bone. My voice, your voice. My voice, your voice. My flesh, flesh your, your flesh. flesh. My, my blood, blood, your blood. My bone, your bone. My voice, your voice. Now my shape is yours, and yours is mine. There's my horse. Take it and go to my kingdom. How will I find it? Follow my hounds. They'll lead you there. Quickly. A year from today, we'll meet here again. Great John, I'll tell you something that you don't know about the story of 
well and our own. Something I don't know. <laughs> Even you. That boar they quarrelled over had just come from mating with me. I gave him the time of his life. That's why he just stood there. Didn't have the strength to move. <laughs> Did Aron keep his promise not to touch Poole's wife? For a time. Yeah. But not for long. <clears throat> Rhiannon was so young and so beautiful that Aron couldn't help desiring her. Besides, she and Pwill had only just married. And she couldn't understand why it was that her husband suddenly showed no interest in her. Why do you turn away from me? Go to sleep, Rian. Have I done something wrong? Have I offended you no, in some you way? No, I haven't offended you. What is it then? Nothing. Nothing. Please. There must be something. Since our first nights together, you've given me no affection. During the day, you look at me with love, with desire. Don't deny it. I see it in your eyes. When the night comes, when we lie together, you turn your back. Rian, you don't understand. I want to understand. I want you to tell me. I can't. Am I your wife? Are you my husband? Answer me. Yes. Then let me be a wife to you. Look at me. Look. Don't you desire me? Yes. Yes, I do. Then show me. Be a husband. Love me. So, Aron broke his promise to Pwyl and loved Rhiannon. And at the end of the year, when Pwyl returned home, he found his wife six months pregnant. Paul! You betrayed me! I betrayed you? Deceived! Mocked! How? Given yourself to another! I've done no such thing! I know you have! I don't understand! Your child. The brat is not mine. Please, my lord, explain. Get away from me. Ah! Don't touch me. You're no longer my wife. Take yourself and that bastard you're carrying back to its father. I don't understand. <laughs> but it wasn't her fault. Twill didn't care about that. His honor had been ruined. That's all he knew. Honor. Men's honor. He couldn't bear to have her near him, nor to see her give birth to another's child. So he took her to the shore and put her in a boat and cast her out on the sea. Let the waves take you. If you die, the sea takes the blame, not me. And if you live... If I live, it will be hate that keeps me living. Pray for my death, husband, because I carry your death here in my belly. As the sea swept her away from the shore, she cursed him, a woman's curse, drawing its power from the very roots of the earth. His death is here in me. I carry life. He has cast me away, so he has cast life away. Death stalks him now. He rules over a dying land, a kingdom of crows and carrion. Nothing will be born in the land he rules. All will wither and die. This life in me will come to the light, and when the time comes, it will return his death to him. And with his spilled blood, it will renew the earth. Kill it! I can't! Now! It's I! Kill! Or we don't eat! No! You do it! It must be you! Take the stone! Smash its skull! Kill it! setting snares all winter. It's the first time I've caught anything. <laughs> oh, look at you. Wet 
eyes over a dead rabbit. You can't afford pity. Not when your life's at stake. Do you think Prideri showed any pity to Pwill when he came face to face with him? Hmm? Prideri? Rhiannon's son. I told you about him. He told me she was saved by a fisherman and that she gave birth to two children, a boy and boy a girl. You hmm? didn't tell me their names. Oh, thought I did. Prideri, that's the son's name. And her daughter's? What was her name? Oh, I'll tell you later. Why not now? Because she doesn't come into the story yet. We must deal with one thing at a time. The first thing I want to deal with is this rabbit. I'll take it back to the cave. Yeah, get it skinned and cooked. But why? I what? can't think about anything else at the moment. No, I'm starving. Oh, that's better. Yeah, that's good. Oh, it's very good. Oh, what a sight. Grease all over his fingers, bits of skin and fat oh. in his beard. Oh, disgusting. Oh. Think how bad them attractive ones. Mankind, the glory of creation. Oh, don't make me laugh. <coughs> now, where were we? Rhiannon's been saved by a fisherman. Fisherman. And she's given birth to two children. A boy named Prideri and a girl whose name you won't tell me. Right, right. Rhiannon didn't stay with the fisherman long. As soon as her children were old enough, she left with them. Nobody saw them again for 16 years. And then? Well, I'll tell you. Mm. But first, we must go back to Bwil. Now, he remained king, but he never married again. He had no more children. And from the time he cast Rhiannon out, his kingdom fell into decay. Crops failed, floods came, there was drought, starvation and disease. Bwil ignored it all. He stayed shut up in his castle, growing older and fatter and sleeping little. And when he did, his sleep was haunted by evil dreams. Your death here grows strong. It lives, it breathes, it calls. Hear my howls, the howls of the unknown. Across the whole land, the earth cries for your death. They have your soul. It comes with teeth and claws, with wings and talons. They call your soul. Close. The whole earth brings you your death. No. See it. Look into, into its face. Go away from me, no. I'll kill you. I'll kill death. Wake up. Dreaming. Uh, oh. Oh, dreaming. I heard oh. you shout. Yes, a dream. That's all. Get me some water. Yes. Uh. Oh. Oh. Oh, that's better. <laughs> Am I afraid of dreams? <laughs> Am I? No, no that's right. For a year I lived in Anne, among the dead. I saw such sights there. <laughs> but there's nothing on earth or out of it now that can frighten me. <laughs> Thank you. You can go now. But, my lord... Didn't you hear me? I came to tell you, my lord. There's news. What news? A white heart has come to the valley. A white heart. Are you sure? Several people have seen it. In my valley. That's good luck. If I could catch it, bring it down. I will. Good luck's returned at last. Have my horse saddled. Prepare my hounds. Yes, my lord. Quickly, and my clothes. Hurry! My bow and my lance. There'll be a death today. And life will come back to my Then Lord Will went hunting for the sacred white heart, which had not been seen by human eyes for many generations. All day he hunted across hills, through valleys, over rivers and streams, until, as the sun was sinking, he came to the edge of the forest, where the heart stood between the trunks of two tall trees, as if waiting. Whoa! There. 
At last. She waits for me. She knows there's no escape. Fit an arrow to my bow. Draw back the string. And... I hit her. She cried out. But her voice... She's gone into the forest. I'll follow her. Hunt her down. My arrow's in her. She's mine. He followed his hound into the forest. They raced ahead of him. Their cries grew distant until they were lost amongst the hushed stillness of the trees. The light was fading. The shadows lengthening the trees grew thick and close together as he drew nearer to the heart of the forest. And all around him, there was silence. Not a single bird cries. My hound's gone. What's happened to them? Never mind, it doesn't matter. There's her trail. The fresh blood. She's near. Near. There, in that thicket, something moved. A shadow. She's in there. Can't take my horse. I'll go on foot. Deeper and deeper. Through briars and brambles and thorns that cut and tore in his flesh like claws. She must be here somewhere. I won't give up. She's close. Very close. Where is she? Where is she? Here. I'm here. Who are you? You know me. If I could see your face. <laughs> Get free of these thorns! See the wound where your arrow struck me. I struck a deer. But the wound you gave me when you cast me out went deeper and has never healed. Cast you out? Rhiannon. Now the time has come when it will be healed. You led me here. You led yourself. You came looking for a death. And you found one. It's your own. Who speaks now? Your death. There's no light. I can't see you. Let me get free of these thorns. And I'll fight you, whoever you are. I'm not the afraid. The turned against you. It holds you. It tears you. Casts you aside. It has given you. Let me draw my sword. Let me fight. I won't die like this, like a... Like a deer in a thicket. Ah. The hounds at its throat. Now, mother. Yes, now. No, Rhiannon, I beg you, don't let me... Take this for my mother. Uh, Tell Aram uh, when you see him, uh, his son has sent you. Uh, 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 uh. Leave his body here. Let the crows and foxes have it. You've done well, Prideria. Now you and your sister can go home at last and take possession of your kingdom. Was it right for them to kill him like that? <coughs> Was it right for him to cast his wife out? No, of course not, but mm. to die like that. Murdered, alone and trapped. You feel pity for him? At the moment of his death, yes. Well, perhaps then you felt his death. Felt? Mm. As if it were your own. Yes. yes. Good, very good. Why do you ask? Oh, there's no reason. None. Sleep. Let's sleep now. Well, not yet. Did Prideri become king? Yes. He and his sister ruled the kingdom together. Ah. Rhiannon didn't go back with them. She wouldn't set foot in the place from which she had been made an outcast. Prideri built a castle for her, Kaya Rhiannon. 
As far as I know, she lives there still. Well, what happened next? When Prideaux... That's enough now. I'm tired. Good night. When do I come into the story? You. Okay. You have been in it from the beginning. I told you. This is your story. What do you mean? What does he mean? Your story. His story. Be mine. We're all part of it, all of us. It's the only story there is. Dead. My love is cold. He lies in the ground as the year grows old. Where have I heard that before? My love lies deep beneath. The earth, I wait for the spring to give him birth. <sighs> Strange. It just came into my head. I, almost as if I wasn't singing it. What's that? Blood. Oh, what? What? There's blood on your mouth. My you mouth. been biting your lips again, chewing your toes. Oh. oh, is it morning already? Morning? It's almost noon. Oh. Where's Clay? Oh, he went out about well, an hour ago. You let him go? You let him go out alone? Don't worry he... yourself, he'll be back soon. Oh. You've got him up. Uh, I suppose you're right. Oh. Oh, I feel stiff and hungry. Is there any meat left on those bones? No, oh, I've finished it off. It's working harder on me than I thought. What is it? Healing him. Bringing back the old memories. They live in me, Keridwen, and they work hard on me. Give it a play. You can, you can do anything. No, no, no. The pattern's fixed. Like the stars and the seasons must be lived through to the end. Um, what is the end? I tell me that. I can't see that far, but there is an end, and it must be endured. Oh, you'll kill yourself, you know that. And if you want my opinion, I don't. I just want some water. Oh, it's stale. No, oh. Gwydion. What is it? What's the matter? Out there. Something's happened to you. Those marks on your arms and your face. Marks? The scratches. Well, I hadn't noticed them. Tell me what happened, quickly. I was watching a hawk kill a pigeon. Mm -hmm. Some blood fell onto my face. I went to a stream to wash it off. Suddenly, I was very tired. I lay down and slept, and I had a dream. I was a bird, an eagle. I was flying high above the earth towards the sun. I could feel the wind in my feathers, my wings stretched out. And then something caught hold of me and began to pull me down. It's a net. I was caught in a net and, and, and the net was dragging me down. I, I struggled, but I couldn't get free. I, I felt as if all my bones were breaking, but my body was being wrenched apart. I, I screamed and I hit the earth. It's all right. It was only a dream. I lay on the ground and I was a man. But was still caught in the net. And then there was a woman standing above me. <clears throat> uh, what did she look like? Oh, she was beautiful. Her hair was golden. She wore a white dress. There was something about her. As if I... As if you knew her. Yes. Go on. She knelt down beside me. Her face was kind and sad. She leaned forward. She put her face close to mine. And she spoke 
softly. I swear this destiny on you. You shall never have a wife from among the people of this earth. Her words filled me with terror. Even though she smiled as she said them and her voice was gentle. And then I saw her dress. Yes. Stained with blood. Fresh blood. The blood she shed for you. The blood all mothers shed for their sons. Who said that? Red pig. Uh, I can understand her. It's about time you did learn a bit of straight talking. You said my mother. She was, wasn't she? That woman. She was my mother. Tell me what happened next. Why did she curse me? What had I done hey. to her? I want to know. I'm answer it. I will. After he has told me the rest of his dream. That woman. My mother stood up again, and I saw another woman standing beside her. She was younger, her hair was dark, she was beautiful as well. But there was something strange and cruel about her beauty. There was blood on her dress too. She knelt down and spoke to me. The hand that plucks me shall wither. He that tastes me will eat bitterness. The one that holds me embraces his doom. As she spoke, I could smell flowers. And there were petals falling. Thousands of petals all around me, over me. That scent was everywhere, rich, sweet, and deadly. Overpowering me, I, I couldn't breathe. And, and the petals scratched. <laughs> they scratched me like claws. It's all right, it's all right now. I woke. They were gone. I was alone in the forest. I came back here. You have been remembering. Understanding is returning. Oh, that's why you can hear Caridwen. It's waking in you. What? Your story, your past, and your future. Why did my mother curse me? She said I would never marry. Why? And, and who was that other woman? Gwydion. Well, can you guess? It's obvious. Caridwen. There are two women in every man's life. Yeah. One's his mother and the other's Shut his... Shut up. My wife. Is that who she was? But, but my mother said... See what you've done now? He's confused. Will you tell me? Yes. Who was my mother? I don't know. Prideri's sister. Uh, and why did she curse me? Because your father took her by force. And then cast her out. Cast her out? Uh, I quilled it to Rhiannon. Yes. Yes, and you helped him, Widgeon. Don't forget that. You? He was my master. I served him. I still serve him even though he's dead. Why? Because he was the future. You are the future. The reign of Aranjorot and Prideri was a golden age. The land thrived, the rivers were full, the trees were fat with fruit. There was no disease, no want. All the lords and princes of the region swore allegiance to them. Your father, Math, among them. But from the moment he saw Aranjrod, oh, he was consumed with desire for her. Now, at first he acted in the proper manner. Math went to ask for her hand in marriage. You wish to marry my sister? Yes. Why? It would be a good marriage. <laughs> for whom? For us both. I think for you more than her. I have great wealth. The land I own... The land you have is in your keeping. No one owns the land. There's much I can offer you... her. 
can't offer her anything she doesn't already have. I can. I can offer her a husband. She doesn't need a husband. Every woman... Not my sister. Every woman... If she's to be a real woman, must That's have a, enough. Must have a husband who will give her children. Enough. The Ramrod will not take you for a husband. Do you understand me? Not you, nor any man. Perhaps she ought to be allowed to answer for herself. I will. My lady. What is it that prompts you to offer me this marriage? My love for you. My deep love. Then why do you insult me? How have I? You've come to ask for my hand. But it's my brother you speak to, not me. Well, I... I, I thought... And the words you speak are an insult mm. to my brother and myself. I meant no insult. It was my heart that spoke. And what is in your heart, Math? Look into it and tell me what is truly there. He can't. Or won't. My lady, I ask forgiveness of you and your brother for any insult I may have given you. You have it. And give me leave to ask my question of you. You have that too. Will you marry me? Not you. Nor any man. I beg you at least to consider... Don't insult me again by asking me further. I've given you my answer. Be content with it. Are you satisfied now? It seems I'll have to be. Won't you stay with us tonight? It's a long journey back to your home. Uh, thank you for your offer, but no. I came for one reason and one reason only. There's nothing to keep me here now. I'll return home. Her refusal wasn't the end for your father. It was only the beginning. He couldn't rest. He couldn't sleep. He was tormented by thoughts of possessing her. But for all his wealth and power, there seemed to be nothing he could do. So he came to see Gwydion, the magician, ah. the fixer. That's right. He came to see me here, in the forest. I want her, Gwydion. I must have her. You understand? I must. It's impossible. Uh, everything's possible. You taught me that. If you have the desire and the will, make it possible. She has refused you. Then I'll take her by force. By force? Ah. Do you know what you're saying? I know. Perhaps you don't. Rhiannon laid a destiny on both her children, that they should never marry and remain innocent. It is the magic of that destiny that has renewed the land and from which it draws its strength. As long as they are pure, the earth shall... I don't be... care about the earth. I only care about her. Yourself. It's the same thing. To take her by force will mean war. A long and terrible war. You'll have to fight, Prideri. Destroy him. I will. I'll fight him and destroy him. Take his sister and rule in his place. And we'll have a real king, a king who has sons, heirs to continue his life. You can't make war on Prideri. You have sworn allegiance to him. I'll break it. And break yourself. All would turn against you. Prideri would be certain to crush you. What am I to do then? She tears me, runs me through. There <sighs> might be a way. If Prideri were to make war on you... Why should he do that? Well, he might be tricked into it. And if he was, if he made the war and not me, he could be defeated? Possibly. Do it for me, Gwydion. Find a way. Come to me when you have a plan. And come soon. You thought of a way? Oh, of course he did. That's what he's good at, plotting, scheming. His mind's got so many twists and turns in it, he sometimes gets lost there himself. Yeah, right. Gwydion, mm. if you saw what was going to happen, if you knew it was wrong... Did what... I say it was wrong? 
I don't deal in right or wrong. I deal in what is and what must be. Videri and Aranhorod served the earth. Through them it grew and blossomed. It was a golden age. But your father wanted to wrest the land from them, stamp his name on it, control it. But he couldn't do it alone. And so I helped him. And don't despise him. He acted according to his nature. And his blood runs in you. So does my mother's. Yes. And in that lies the hope. Get on with the story. Tell won't. him how you tricked Pideri into war. No, no, no. Let me tell him. <sighs> this master thief stole Pideri's herd of pigs. These were very special pigs given to Pideri by his father, Aran. <laughs> I used magic to steal them. Don't take all the credit. <laughs> I was the one who let them away. Oh. I couldn't resist me. When Pretty discovered they had gone, he went in search of them. He found them on Math's land. <laughs> Math denied the taking of them. Which was true. Pretty called him a liar. And the war began. <laughs> Indeed, a long and terrible war. Many were killed. The earth was wet. The dying cried for their mother. Crows blackened the sky. The wind was heavy with the smell of corpses. But there was no victor on either side. You promised me victory, Quition. Where is it? You said I'd have his death. My sword glances off him as if it's bewitched. I promise you will kill him. When? Tomorrow. When you face him in single combat. Are you mad? Look at my wounds! With each new day, I feel more of my strength draining from me. And with each new day, his strength grows. How can I hope to defeat him alone? You won't be alone. What do you mean? I'll be there to help In secret. I shall ensure your victory. Let me go and see him now. He wants an end to this war. He will accept the offer. And with it, he will accept his death. Oh, Derry, won't you try and sleep? I can't. I feel uneasy. Uneasy? Listen, Arnold. How quiet it is. How still. Nothing moves. It's the middle of the night. Even so, there's usually some sound. The wind. A night bird. A man turning in his sleep. Tonight there's nothing. As if some terrible crime has been committed, some awful atrocity taking place before my eyes, here, now. But it's hidden from me. And the worst thing is the feeling I have that it's me that's doing it, that I myself am the criminal. You've committed no crime. I was wrong to start this war. You were tricked into it. That's no excuse. I let myself be tricked. The responsibility's mine. Then it's mine too. If there's guilt, we share it. Sister, I'm scared. Of Matt? <laughs> He's no danger. No, of myself of the danger that lies in me. I keep... I keep thinking of Quill, that day in the forest. At every step he had the chance to turn back, to avoid his death, but he didn't. He kept coming straight towards it. He couldn't help himself. I felt sorry for him. He deserved to die. That we all do. It's the same for us all. We're born with our death in us and with the hope of escaping our deaths. But it seems that hope is always dashed. We ourselves throw it away as if we want to embrace death. Our 
our lives are fixed before our birth. Who knows how far back it all goes? Is someone coming? Who is it? I don't know. There. A the figure in the dark. Who are you? A messenger from Lord Map. I am unarmed. What message do you have? <clears throat> Math wishes to end the war. Oh, he knows he can't defeat you. He knows the wrong is on his it side. It is the matter of right and wrong he wishes to settle. And the only way to settle such a matter is through single combat. Your strength against his. And whoever wins... I don't believe him. It's another trick. There is no trick. This dispute is between Prideri and Math. Why should the innocent be slaughtered? Because of them. The war is senseless. Let it be settled once and for all. Tomorrow. Why should Math decide this now? Why didn't he make this offer before the slaughter began? He sees defeat staring him in the face. He's afraid. No, Aran Rod. He's right. <sighs> Between the two of us alone. I'll tell him you accept them. Wait. How do I know Math will keep his word? Ah. As a sign of his good faith, he will send his army home when the sun rises. You yourself can supervise their leaving. When you are satisfied, every man has gone. You then must do the same. Send all your people back. You and he alone. I'll stay. I won't go back. No. You must leave tomorrow. Yes, you must go, uh, Aran Rod. You. you know it's right, sister. <sighs> Math must see that I mean to keep faith as well. Tell your master that I accept all of these conditions. I'll face him tomorrow on the field, alone. And between us, we'll bring this stupid war to an end. Did Math keep his word? He did. They faced each other alone? Alone. So, my father killed Prideri fairly. Oh, no, he didn't, did he, Gwydion? Uh, wasn't even Math that killed him. Who was it, then? The trees. The, the trees killed him. I remained behind after the armies had gone. On top of a hill overlooking the field where Math and Prideri fought. I was hidden amongst a clump of trees. I fought hard, each man holding his ground. But as the day went and the sun began to fall, Math grew weaker. With the darkening of the shadows, his strength ebbed. He gave ground, missed blows, stumbled, while Prideri fought with the strength of the earth in him and seemed to grow in stature and power. Right is on my side. The earth proclaims it. My sword in your heart will prove it. Nothing's proved. Not yet. Not while I still stand. Math aimed a blow at Prideri, struck his shield, and the sword shattered. Math fell with the force of his own blow. He knelt on the ground, unarmed, helpless. The war's over. Yield to me, and I'll spare you. I've no wish to take your life. I'll never yield to you. I give you your death, then. But even as he spoke... Even as Prideri raised his hand to deliver the death blow which would never fall, his eyes caught sight of the hill above him. And there he saw... Men! Soldiers! You... you lied to me! Men? Where? I see only trees! There! On the hilltop! With bows drawn. There's a trick of the light. They're trees, that's all. With crows in the branches. Men on trees. What are they? 
I can't see! In your own eyes tell you what they are. Men and trees. Warriors conjured by me out of root and branch and leaf. Each armed with a bow with arrows of crow feathers. At my word, they took aim and let their arrows fly. And the arrows flew towards their mark. God! Betrayed! Save me! Mother! Why have you abandoned me? As her son cried out, Rhiannon heard only the bark of a fox. As his life ran out into the earth, she slept dreamless in her bed. When the crows picked over her son's bones, she rose and smiled to greet the coming day. He who had killed a man without mercy had in his turn been killed. Is that why Pryderi had to die? Because he'd killed Pwyll? Uh, that is part of the answer. All crimes must be avenged. The earth doesn't forget them. The balance must be maintained. But it seems that in avenging one crime, another is committed, which must also be avenged. That is true. We are caught in a trap, and there seems to be no escape from it. Perhaps it is simply the way that the world moves forward. Must it be the only way? If another way could be found to break out of this trap, if, if we could free ourselves... Go on, yes, say if, it. Instead of killing... I don't know what it is I'm trying to say. Oh, pretty. There is no other way. Not for us in our time. You will find for yourself that there is no escape. What's born into us drives us on. We don't know to what end. Your father was driven by his desire for Aranhrad, and he let it lead him after the killing of Prideri to seek her out. She was waiting in her castle for Prideri's return, and as the door of her chamber opened and Math entered, she turned. And it was Prideri she saw. Prideri! Another little conjuring trick, for lover. I was afraid. I had a dream. You were dead. Your body was filled with arrows. As you can see, I'm alive. You killed him? Yes. And took wounds yourself. Take off your clothes. I'll bathe you. It was a hard fight. He fought well until the end. There was a time when I thought he might defeat me. Oh, but you were bound to win. You're the rightful king. Say those words again. You are the rightful king. Yes, it's true. I am. Oh, but your poor body. It's so torn. Oh, some of these wounds are deep. Am I hurting you? No. And there are old wounds. Scars I haven't seen before. Where did these come from? They're the wounds Prideri gave me on the battlefield. What? But they don't go as deep as the wounds I gave him. You! You dreamed right. Your brother's dead. No! And I am the rightful king. You said so Help yourself. Me. There's no use struggling. No use crying out. All are asleep. No one can hear you. We fought. He died. I am the victor. Now I've come to claim my prize. On that night, you were conceived. After Math had left her, as she lay alone, Aranhorod felt the beginnings of life stir in her. Like a worm burrowing its way down into her flesh. She felt its strength, its maleness biting deep. And she cursed it. This child in me, this creature, it will live a fruitless life. 
His flesh will be kissed by eternal winter. The roots of a withered tree will ensnare his soul. What do you mean? You took me against my will. You forced this child on me. Take him. Take your son. You carry your death in your arms. Do you threaten me? He'll be no son to you. You'll die in despair, and the land will die with him. You can't harm me. I swear this destiny on him. He shall never have a wife from among the people of this earth. It wasn't you she hated. It was your father. But through you, she took her revenge on him. When you grew... I don't want to hear any more. You have to understand. I don't want to. I've heard enough. You must hear no. it all. No. I wish you'd never told me any of this. I wish you'd never found me. Why? Leave him. You come back. He'll have to. He's got nowhere else to go. Why was I born? What for? To feel only pain and emptiness. Better to have not been born at all. to listen to the rest of the story. Now, time's getting on, you know. The year's turning. Yes. I'm ready. Oh. Tell me about my wife. No, oh, all in good time. Bladiath? How do you know about her? Do you remember? I saw her in a dream. She spoke to me. What did she say? I can't remember. Go on with my story. Oh, very well. You grew to be a fine, strong boy. At the age of ten, you were a master with a spear. I taught you myself. <laughs> One time, I took you down to the river. Do you see the tree growing on the far bank? I said to you. I see it, you said. Do you see the bird sitting on the highest branch? I see it. Do you see the eye in the bird's head? I see it. Throw your spear and pierce that. And you did. You pierced it straight through and with such ease. It was on that day I named you Lie of the Deft Hand. Lie, Lau Guffes. <laughs> Why don't I remember any of this? Because in those days you lived as if in a dream. The world wasn't a real place to you. You were under your mother's curse, remember? And to the world? You a little less than... An idiot. That's what my son is. A fool. No, he is not. He learns things quickly. Look at him there. Squatting on the ground, scribbling in the earth with a stick. He is drawing. He likes to draw. He likes to read and write, to compose and recite poetry. He also likes to ride, hunt, throw a spear. I know all the things you've taught him. Then you know that he is no fool. He might as well be. What use is it all if he can't get a wife? If he fathers no sons, he skulks up here like some misshapen monster. No woman will look at him. His eyes frighten them, they say. 
Everything I did, the war with Prideri, getting the crown, it was all for him, my son. Do you tell me now it was all for nothing? I don't know. It wasn't. It wasn't for nothing, Gwydion. And you'll make sure of it. Look, see what I've drawn. Yes, let me see. Ah. What is it? Flowers. Flowers, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Or a bird. Perhaps it could be both. <laughs> it's neither. It's dirt. Just dirt. There. I wipe it out with my foot. No! Listen, look at me. Look at me, boy. Do you know who I am? I'm your father. I'm getting old. You'll be king one day. The land will be yours. But what kind of king will you be without heirs? Who'll rule the kingdom after you? Stop Do you know what will happen? There'll be war again. The land's turned into turmoil. Is that what you want, eh? A barren king makes the land barren. Leave him alone. Make him a man! Edwin! He runs to get comfort from a pig. You won't get anywhere by hurting him. The boy can't help what he is. But you can. Me? You have power, Gwydion. Use it. Help me. I am not sure. I've come here to beg you for help. <laughs> Again. It's the last time. You said that before. I didn't know what would happen. You killed her brother. Raped her. I haven't come here to be judged. Use your power. Break her curse. You overestimate my power. His own mother has laid this destiny on him. I can't avert it. Can't? Or won't? I can't. We're to be ruled by women, then. We're to cower beneath their threats and curses. No. We'll rule this world. We'll take it and shape it to our own liking. We'll stamp our names into it, and the whole earth will shake beneath us. From now on, we'll make our own destinies. Get my son a wife. You've never failed me before. And who knows what the consequences might be. Just do as I ask. You brought me a wife. I know that. I saw her in my dreams, but how? Oh, how else? With magic, that's right, isn't it? Yes, with magic. Oh, he thought long and hard about it. For a whole year he sat outside the cave in the wind and the rain. Scorched by the sun. Frozen by ice and snow. He didn't speak or move. He hardly breathed. Well, sometimes I thought he died, but oh, he wasn't dead. I had gone deep into myself. He was going on a journey to dark, far-off places. Down long roads through tangled forests and endless mazes. It was a terrible journey for him. He faced many dangers. I struggled with hideous monsters. Fought battles more bloody than any here on Earth. Many times I was destroyed. But I rose again, reborn. Time stopped. I saw all the ages of the world from the beginning to the end. I was there at the creation of mankind. And I saw our race consumed forever in the great fire to come. I stepped out among the region of the stars and I heard the silence. That is the voice of the universe. And then I came to the very center and there, I found the answer. When spring came again, he opened his eyes. He smiled and lifted his hand. He held something between his fingers. A flower. A flower? Yes. That's the answer. I'll make a woman of flowers. Ladiah. He gave her to you. You were married. Woman of flowers. My wife. You. Why? And that night, you celebrated your wedding. I'm your husband. My husband. You're the only woman I'll ever love. Love. Oh, come to me. You're mine. You were made for me. For you. We must 
Let's love each other. No! What is it? What's wrong? I'm afraid. You want to hurt me. No, why should I want to Please, hurt you? tearing my roots. I love you. Leaves broken, petals ripped. The diet, listen. Where's the sun? Where are the birds? Listen to me. It's dark. It's cold. You're here with me. Let me go. Well, still. I want to go home. This is your home. The wind, the trees, the leaves, the earth. I want you. Ah, the flowers. Do as I say. I am your husband and master. <laughs> and in his room, alone, Math heard her cry and smiled. Uh, he takes her. He makes her his own. Plants his seed in her, the seed of our future. He is making himself a son. He has a wife. You hear her, Ranrod. Your son has a wife. <laughs> that night, the night of the wedding, Math had a dream. I hear Math. I hear how she screams, how she cries out. I hear how she weeps for her spilled blood. Her scream in my throat, my cry in her mouth. He makes the future. You have no future. His future's dead before it's born. He has a wife. His wife's no wife. What's taken by force is no man's. Listen to her. Hear her voice. Man that plucks me shall wither. He that tastes me will eat bitterness. The one that holds me embraces his doom. Your doom, Math. The doom of all your race. Each time he loves her. Each time you push a child into me. She tears that child. I choke it in my womb. Each time he takes her, he murders his children. Each time you enter me, you slaughter your sons. Touch is the executioner's axe. Your case is the butcher's knife at the throat. The snake's fang is in the mouse's flesh. The owl's claws in the sparrow's skull. The weasel's teeth in the rabbit's ear. Do you head. hear that cry? Lie. Do you hear it, man? Out there in the dark. That cry in the that dark. Cry that cry is the cry of your dead son. Your lost kingdom. <laughs> What is it? What's the matter? I heard a cry. It's nothing. Nothing for you to fear. Rest in my arms. Uh. Sleep, my husband, my love. Uh. Sleep. When morning came, your father was found dead. Oh, the excitement was just too much for him. So you became king. And Matt became meat for the worms. Worms that I ate. I took your father into my oh. belly and I shat him out again on the earth. Shut up! She never loved me. No. Because I struck her? Not just because of that. She was born to be flowers, to grow in the earth, feel the wind, drink sun and rain. We made her flesh and blood, chained her to a human body. You made her. You brought her to me. You drew her in the ground with your stick. The idea was yours. I just did what was required. I loved her. You took her. No. You struck her. You forced her into submission. So her belly stayed empty and her heart was filled with hate? For me? Yes. In the three years you were married, in the three years that you ruled the kingdom together, she dreamed only of your death. I remember once. She was sitting alone at the window. Looking out over the hills. My love is dead. My love is cold. He lies.
is in the ground as the year grows old. Will die? <laughs> What's that you're singing? It's an old song. Where did you hear it? I don't know. I can't remember. I think I've always known it. My love is gone. My love is lost. His kiss is cold as the winter's frost. It's a sad song. Yes, it is. Why are you singing it then? Life's sad. What have you got to be sad about? Don't you know? Will you have a child one day soon? I don't think so. Will, I'll go to Gwydion. No. Not to him. Why not? He'll know some child. I want nothing to do with him. He scares me. I'd rather I stay barren. Don't say that. You're not barren. If I am, we must accept. I won't. Why are you angry? Do you think it's my fault? Perhaps you want to turn me out and take another wife. No. No. I'll never do that. I love you, Blood. Yes, I know. I have to go away tomorrow. There are... Duties, only for a few days, a, a week at the most. I'll be all right. Will you? Of course. Why shouldn't I be? When I get back, perhaps you'll be happier. And perhaps then... Yes. Perhaps. My love lies deep. Beneath the earth, I wait for the spring to bring his birth. You left her. You went away. And you didn't return for a long time. No. There was a tower. A tower? You had never seen before, on top of a high hill. And there was music coming from inside. Oh, such music. I, I couldn't help myself. You went into the tower, and you climbed to the top. You came to a room. It was empty, except for a fountain in the middle. The music came from the fountain. Resting on the edge of the fountain was a bowl golden bowl fastened with four chains. And the four chains rose into the air. You could see no end to it. The bowl was oh, so beautiful. Carved with intricate patterns, the water in the bowl shone, the light from it filled the whole room. I walked over to the bowl and placed my hands on and it. And your hands stuck fast to and your feet stuck to the floor. I couldn't move. I couldn't speak. You forgot who you were. My love is cold. Blood Dyeth walks the hills. She sits by the river. She makes chains of flowers and throws them. She sleeps in the forest. I saw her once, covered with leaves and twigs. The moon was on her face and she was smiling. She takes off her clothes and lies naked in the sun. She presses her body down to the warm earth. There's a stone by the river, standing like a man, centuries old. She wraps her arms round it and kisses it. Time passes. She listens and watches and waits. And in the end, he comes. Who? Her lover. Your killer. <laughs> Granu Pebi, <laughs> Lord of Pendlin. A month ago, I gave chase to a stag. A king of beasts. It led me far from my home. Through woods. 
across crags and mountains. Until now, my hounds ran it to ground. A magnificent animal. It fought valiantly. I cut its throat with my knife. I was sleeping. I heard it cry. I saw... My lady? There's blood on your hands. The stag's blood. No matter how much I wash them, it won't come off. But the river's turned red. What? It's the setting sun. Come to my home. It isn't far. You can wash properly there. Uh, I'll soon have them clean. You've ridden far. I'll give you food and fresh clothing. My servants will see to your horse and your hands. There's no need. You are in my kingdom. You must be my guest. I insist. She takes him by the hand and leads him to her castle. He is washed, dressed in the finest clothes. A feast is prepared for him. She attends to him, shows him every respect. It is late. You can't leave tonight. You must stay. As you wish, my lady. As I desire. He stayed, and he didn't sleep alone. Poor man, he didn't stand a chance. My love. My love. You must never leave me now. No. Never. You belong to me. For all time. For all time. Be my king. Your king? My ruler. My sovereign. You have a husband. I'll put his crown on your head. How? We'll kill him. No! At the moment they planned your death, the golden bowl that held you cracked. The chains fell to the floor. The fountain dried up. And standing before you was a woman. You're free now. Free? Do you remember who you are? Yes. How long have I been here? Too long. You must return to your kingdom. My wife? She's waiting for you. Go to her. Who are you? Rhiannon. Rhiannon? You were in her castle. Under her enchantment. She kept you there until the time was ready. And then... She sent you back to your death. Oh. Why? Oh, haven't you understood anything I've told you? No one can escape the results of his actions. A crime had been committed. It had to be paid for. Which crime? There have been so many. They are all one, the same. The crime that was born into us at the very beginning. We must all atone for it. It's the old story. Sows eat their pharaoh and wives murder their husbands. The oldest story there is. Do you remember your death? No. I think you do. You tell me. Describe it. When you came back, Blodiath was waiting for you beside the river, at the place where the stone stands in the earth. She ran to you, her arms open. She pulled you from your horse. Fly! I knew you'd come back. Oh, blood dying. Look at you. You can't go back to the castle like this. I've brought your finest clothes. <coughs> See? And oils to anoint your body. Take off those rags you're wearing. Uh, here? Yes. Here. But don't argue. Take them off. <laughs> I'll wash you in the river. <laughs> All right. All right. She stripped you. She took you to the middle of the river. She bathed your body. There. You're clean again. Uh, All the dirt of your journey is washed away. Uh, uh, can I dress now? No. But I'm cold. Not yet. Wait. Where are you going? To fetch the oil. You can do that on the bank. No, I can't. <laughs> I'm shivering. I won't be long. Wait there. Well, what for? 
for this. He stepped from behind the stone. There was a spear in his hand, ash tipped with iron. He raised the spear. No! Strike! The spear flew from his hand. It pierced your heart. Ah! With a single cry, you fell. He's dead. Is he? Yes. I'm not sure. His blood runs into the river. He's moving. No. He lies still. Let's go and see. Leave him. Come now. Gather your soldiers. Subdue the country. It's yours. You remember now? Yes. Everything. I remember everything. You became an eagle. Mm. For a whole year, you lived in the wild. Until I found you and brought you back. Who found oh, him? Until we found him. Thank you. I wish you hadn't. I wish you'd left me as I was. I was happy. Why did you bring me back to this? You have a duty to perform. You know what it is. Blood. Blood. There's been enough bloodshed. Not yet. The earth needs more. I won't provide it. There's no one else. It's your destiny. I don't want it. You can't escape it. Gwydion, listen to me. I asked you once if there was a way to break out of this, this trap, this cycle of death and revenge. And I told you there wasn't. There is. It's simple. My blood's been shed. The crime's been paid for. The land has a king. Grano rules in my place. Let him keep the throne. Let things remain as they are. That's not possible. Why? Because they suffer. Not Dyeth and Grano. They torture each other, chained together by their own guilt and pain. As long as she remains in human form, her heart will be twisted with hate. As long as he lives with the memory of your death, his spirit will cry in torment. Their suffering is on you. Only you can release them from it. By killing him? It must be done. He wants it. What about Bladiah? Leave her to me. I'll do what I can for And afterwards? When it's over? Become king again. Rule the land. Will everything be at peace then? I can't answer that. You know you must do it. Yes. I know. Wind in the leaves, the sun warming me old bones. Oh, it feels good. Yeah. The land's getting fat again, swelling, pushing up juicy shoots. Yeah. Nothing stays dead for long. Have you finished making the spear? Yes. It's ready. Lift it, then. It's a good weight. Do you see that tree at the edge of the clearing? I see it. On the top branch, there's a bird. I see it. Do you see its head? Proud. I see it. Do you see the eye in its head? Gold like fire with a black center. I see it. Could you throw your spear and pierce the bird's eye? Easily. Shall I? No. Let it live. That spear was made for killing more than a bird. Are you ready? Yes. Then go and do what has to be done. I will. Why are you crying? 
lying. I am not. There are tears in your eyes. They are not tears. Running down your cheeks, making your beard wet. My beard is not wet. You're slipping, Gwydion. You're not as good a liar as you used to be. William! Yes? It's a good day! Yes! A fine spring day. The sun's warm. It's good to be alive. Yes, it is. There, below, my land, my kingdom, I return to take possession of it. The valley, the hills beyond, the river, and there, on the bank, the stone. I see him. He's come. He's waiting for me. Christian, wake up. Hey, old man, wake. Are you asleep? Or are you dead? Oh, smells like you are. No, you always smell like that. You're not going to die now, are you? You can't. You've been with me so long, I've got used to having you around. I won't let you die. Wake up. Oh, come on, wake. Oh, that's more like it. Oh, what is it? Wakey, wakey, the moon's shining. <sighs> you. Who else did you expect? Leave me alone. No, I won't. Wake up. I've got something to tell you. I was having a lovely dream. Uh, all about a man who fell in love with a pig, I know. You can go back to it later. Listen to what I've got to say first. Mm, I don't want to. It's important. Nothing's important anymore. It's about crime. You sent me to find out what happened. Don't you want to know how the story ends? I already know. Oh, you think you know everything. What did you send me to find out for if you already know? Get me out of the way so you could lie here and dream yourself to death. Oh, I won't let you off the hook that easy. I'm going to tell you and you're going to listen. All right, then. Go on. Now, Clive went back. When he got to the river, he found the other one waiting for him. Bruno de Bille, Lord of Penchlin. Yeah, that's him. He knew that Fly was returning. I put the knowledge in his head. You have to take the credit for everything, don't you? Mm. Well, anyway, there they were, the two of them. Fly on one side of the river, Grano on the other. And Fly had his spear with him. Grano didn't have anything. I knew you'd come back. I've been waiting for you. I have something of yours I wish to return. I know. Will you take it back? I'll take it. Prepare yourself, then. Is there no way out of this? No. The pattern's fixed. Will you grant me a favour? Let me place this stone between myself and the blow. I'll grant you that. Farewell, then. Brother. Farewell. So, Clono stood behind the stone. But it didn't do him any good. Of course it didn't. Cly threw the spear. It went right through the stone, into Clono, and come out through the back of his neck. Fell down dead without a sound. And then? Well, then, Cly went back to the castle looking for Bladiyan. Oh, we searched everywhere for her, but he couldn't find her. She had gone. That's right. And I know where. Where? Well, don't you know? If I did, I wouldn't have asked. Oh, I thought you knew everything. Where is she? She's here. She's come to see you. <laughs> me. Hark. I can't. Please. 
There is little I can do. You made me. You brought me to this. Changed me back to what I was. None of us can go back to what we were. Who will help me? Who will take away this pain? Your pain will be with you always. A flame in your eyes. A hunger in your heart. I want the trees, the wind, the light. Then go to them. Float your body on the wind. Carry the night in your voice. I was flowers. Make me flowers again. Not flowers. I give you wings and claws. Be a bird. Be flower face. Be owl. was the best I could do, Caritwin. My magic is all used up. Gwydion! Gwydion! It's him. Gwydion, where are you? He's come looking for you. He won't find me. Are you in there? No. Gwydion! He's here. He can't see us. Where are you? I need you. We are already dead to his world. 